Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're going to be looking at VMware 8.0 I hope um, they came out in December with a new ISO for that they announced it back in May I think August maybe maybe it was August yeah back in May though uh, Broadcom announced that they were going to be buying VMware for 61 billion uh, American dollars which is just roughly around the same amount of money that I get every time you like my video so do support my uh, financial side of this stuff and like the video uh, 61 billion dollars what a dream that's a lot of money and um, when something like this happens sometimes you think oh it's a good thing that this company bought that product and uh, very often it's not because 61 billion dollars I'll bet you that there are some investors in Broadcom that would like to see some of that money come back into the account of the company so they're gonna do whatever they can to scrape in more cash just like Dell EMC is doing right now before they sell the company they're scratching in cash from both sides but today we're gonna try and see if we can install their new version I have already done a USB key this tiny one this is not big so um I did also print out what was new in this uh, ESXi 8.0. They say it's more scalable. It has distributed service engine security. Oh, that's a new feature. Lifecycle management, vCenter recovery, new virtual hardware, virtual Luma configuration, DRS and vMotion, VMware vSAN, and Tangzu Kubernetes. Okay, we're not gonna get into any of that, but I'm just gonna see if it installs. I'm gonna jinx myself and see if I can install it on a Hewlett Packard DL380 Generation 9. It's not supported, but it saves me the trouble of going around the back and uh, swapping cables over to another server because we just messed with this in the last video. So, yeah, let's see what happens. So, down here we have the server in question. Oh, we, we need our studio lights. Oh. Um, yeah, USB key goes in there. Ah, it's a tight fit. Uh, we still have two drives here in an array, two 450 gigabyte spinning disks. Then we have four SSDs, and uh, yeah, we're gonna install the operating system on probably those, and then it doesn't matter. We're not gonna be using this for anything. We're just gonna test it out. So power. Server. Oh, you can say much about it. Hewlett Packet, they make it look good. Up here, the server is booting. Um, 24%. Thank you very much. So, while it's thinking about this, all the major brands make their own customized version of ESXi. So, you can get a customized ISO file for Hewlett Packard, you can get it for Lenovo, Dell all the other ones oh we need to uh, f11 to boot menu right there there's bigger chance that we get to boot from our usb stick if we pick that one uh, so you can you can go and get those iso files and actually if you just if you have a lenovo server on lenovo's website you can just download this, you don't have to log in or anything. You can, without any hassle, get an 8.0 ESXi file for VMware. On Hewlett Packard, you need to log in to get that, and I couldn't find my login for that. But on VMware's homepage, they have actually collected all of them, so you can see all the different brands that has made these customized ISOs, and with your VMware login, you can, you can get all of them. So that's kind of cool. So, no mouse. Okay, need to go in there, select enter to enter the Legacy BIOS one-time boot, okay. Not much happening here. Oh, okay, finally. I guess that would be number two.
Yeah, I think we need to reboot this. It's doing its Hewlett Packard Enterprise thing. Okay, I'm in here checking the boot order, and it seems that if I just didn't try to press 11, F11, it would probably have gotten to it. So, just gonna try and escape and see if if it will do it. And reboot the server. It did. <laughs> okay, that was quick. Oh, we need to. And the keyboard is up. So, um, yeah, that's not very helpful. Okay, so far so good. Seize the server, seize the processor, seize our RAM. I'm missing a hundred megabytes. I, uh, I went around the back and I unplugged the keyboard and plugged it back in and now I can uh, I can I can activate key lock uh, caps lock so something was wrong there oh uh, I think that might be okay we want to install press enter we agree to the terms we don't have a choice so let's hope that it finds something to install this on. It does. Awesome. We have those two spinning disks, two, uh, 450 gigabytes in a RAID 1 mirror. And then we have our four drives from earlier this week where we did those. They are in a RAID 5, four SSDs. And then it has the Kingston DT Micro. That's the USB key. So we're going to be installing on the two spinning disks. It's not that wise to have it running off of spinning disk, but well, that doesn't matter. It recognizes them as HP because they're on a HP controller. Keyboard layout. I have an English keyboard, so I think we'll be good with that one. And I'll enter my secret. There. Oh, these CPUs are already not supported. The CPUs in this host are not supported by ESX. You can override and force installation, but it's not officially supported or recommended. <sighs> A good CPU. Let's see. Enter to continue. Are you sure? Be, okay it's gonna delete our drive we are fine with that I think we will manage so while it's thinking about that I can show you my printout here uh, the number of vGPU devices is increased to 8 I haven't run into that issue yet and the number of ESXi hosts that can be managed by a lifecycle manager has increased from 400 to 1000 I'm a few servers short to even run into the 400. Uh, VMs per cluster has increased from 8 to 10,000. VM direct path IO device per host has increased from 8 to 32. Okay, it's, it's probably not gonna make the biggest difference here. I think the installation speed has decreased. There we are, it has installed. We should be able to remove the USB and reboot. So we're gonna press enter and remove the USB stick. 
and it should be rebooting. And you get a better overview. There we are. Okay, it's a version 3 of the CPU. So, I don't know, maybe the version 4 is better. So now we are booting the server again and it should be starting booting ESXi shortly. When it, yeah. yeah, it's going through all the different tests and then it's going to boot ESXi. Okay, looks promising. It seems that they have come up with uh, giving it some additional information down here to, uh, to help if there is something going on. Telling us what it's actually doing and then the successful thought here. So even though this looks very familiar to what it has always looked like, it seems that they have come up with some little way to improve it. There we are. And I see that we are missing a network connection, so we need to figure that out. Oh, to uh, mess around with the networking we need to press F2 and then we have to Give it our secret password here. There, and it takes a little bit, just long enough that you worry that you did something wrong. Uh, configure network address, right? Uh, configure management network. And in here, we can see the different network adapters if we press here. And I can see that it has connected to NIC1 which is disconnected. I have just went around the back and connected to NIC, uh, connected NIC 0, but um, yeah, that's a 1 gigabit connection. Down here it also has two 10 gigabit connections, of which NIC 5 is, uh, is connected, so we're gonna try and put that one in, and remove that one, and let's try and say that that's good. And right now it's it's using dynamic IP4 address and network configuration. That's a DHTP. Let's set it to static and give it an IP number. Uh, I forget if there's anything on that. No. See if we're good to go on that. Oh, I want to disable uh, IP6. That is just disabled. Okay, and that is still set. And then escape. And then yes. And it's restarting the host. Is that the whole host or just the networking? Hmm. We will see in a second. That's the whole host. Okay. I messed up. I'm already using IP number 75. So we need to change that again. Guess it's good. We have moved to the living room and there is something that is uh, is on 85 so I'm hoping that we are dealing with our new it seems promising new logo and stuff so let's log in with root and our secret password there looks good we get a product thinky that we can join and share our experience I very highly recommend that you make up your own mind and we have all kind of errors and ideas. Firstly, it tells us that we um, we have 60 days to, to get addicted. In those 60 days, they'll give us all the bells and whistles. 
and we'll be missing everything when that 60 days is gone so that's sad then it's telling us that the certificate assigned is not valid yet uh, tomorrow morning it should be good then there is a potential vulnerability on this host and it recommends us to go check that out okay probably i should have firmware updated this server never mind but all in all it looks good the server is up and running and i could go and make some virtual machines uh, get vcenter server okay so that brings us to um, to vmware that was not exactly what i was hoping for we changed the look a little bit so we, we can create new vms here we can create them from scratch or we can create them from an OVF file or registrate an existing virtual machine if we just copied the file over and they're in a in a folder let's see our storage we have one storage and that's the one that we have installed on so we could make a new storage create new storage yes and it should be able to see that we have our our four uh, one terabyte hard drives that are in a RAID 5 so about three terabyte SSD we can give that a name and we can start using that let's not do that today I think we'll call it a success the yellow is prettier so if you haven't uh, yet liked this video you can always find the donation button and just put 61 billion dollars on my account directly it's up to you it's fine it's, I wouldn't mind don't worry about it PayPal does take a fee but well I'll, I'll cover that then <laughs> thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye